Welcome to Gary's Hobby Studio. In this video, I'm going to go over some disk imaging software. Um, it's I want to say I want to say I'm pronouncing the name correctly. It's uh, Macrum Reflect. They have a free edition and a paid edition. The paid edition will get you some other features, but I use the free edition because the free edition is actually really good and I need to hook up my external so let me do that and I'll come right back okay so basically here is what the software looks like okay and what it what you can do with it is that you can select a disk to image uh, here's the 500 uh, gig drive that's in the this machine along with the one terabyte and those are both SSDs um, their NVMe drives and then here is the two and a half inch drive that I typically store stuff on because it's it's a spinning drive and this way here if these drives burn out I'm not losing anything but what you want to do is if you want to image the entire drive like OS all your applications installed as is what you can do is that you can select this drive here and it says clone this disk or image this disk. Now cloning it, if you click on this, it'll clone it from this drive to a different drive. So let's say you were gonna replace um, the spinning drive with a you know, NVMe drive if, if it has the, the capability or even if it's just a regular two and a half inch. You could do it one of two ways. If your machine has more than one spot, you can have two drives connected. It can do it internally. Or you could use an external drive to image it to and then swap the drive with the new one. You will have to create a restore uh, disk. And they've changed the software because this is like version 8. You used to be able to create a restore disk. I'll have to figure out how how I do that. Um, but anyways, if you image this disk, which we're going to do that right now, okay, is it's going to image the boot sector, you know, these sections that Windows needs to start up and everything. Here's the actual primary start where the OS and the programs reside. And then here's like a reserve I have no idea what all these different ones are. And you can select a folder or you can click on alternative uh, locations and add the list. Let's say this is it. Yes. So we will select this, make a new folder. Okay, and so it's going to go right there, and then you can do next. You could set up a schedule if you want to do that. Um, and you can adjust here, like you know, keep twelve backups, differential backups, four incremental backups. So however you want to do it, uh, you know, if you want to do full differential. That's totally up to you how you want to do it because see here's the uh, where you could select a plan grandfather father son differential backup set incremental I typically do a full and I usually do it typically once a month um, but you know you can set it however you want however you need and it says purge the oldest backup set if less than five gigabytes on target volume minimum one gigabyte or and you can change the size of it you can increase it decrease it however you want to do it next and then finish and then it'll save this folder back up to where you store it and then it's starting to back up right now let's see and I can't yeah I can't do anything with it right now let's hide that oh it 
hides the whole thing. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this for right at the moment. And pull that back up. And depending upon the speed of your machine, you know, it could take a while. It could take very, you know, little time. It just depends on how much stuff you have. Um, let's see. Selected disk, backup windows, backup, uh, backup templates, disk rate performance restore. Other tasks. Ah, here it is. It's in other tasks now. Okay, and what you can do is you can do, um, you can create an ISO file. You could probably use um, Rufus to put it on a USB to boot up off of that. For some stupid reason. Oh, it's because it's. Ugh. Why can't you guys just fit shit? Anyway. Uh, but, you know, it tells you this. And you can select which way you want to do it. Windows boot menu, add, uh, slash change the boot menu for the selected Windows PE version. USB hard drive, which... Um, I don't know what that is. But I'm going to select create a rescue disk and I'm going to change where it's going to put it have it put it in my documents let's see I think yep yeah, I have an ISO and then it's going to build that ISO and then it has to give you the warning of, you know, you're only using it for commercial, for non-commercial use. Because I am using the free edition, and yes, I do run a Windows domain in my house. Um, if I'm going to do any kind of commercialized kind of stuff with the other features that it, that it has, I would definitely pay for the license. But considering I'm just using it to just image just, like, my machine, my wife's machine... The free again, the free version will probably fit. I want to say ninety to ninety-five percent of most users out there. So let's go ahead and click OK. Staging area. I don't know how long this takes. This is chai tea, no alcohol, no nothing in it. That's weird, adding Wi-Fi support? Huh. Don't know why you would do that, but... I just find it weird that you have to add Wi-Fi support when you're probably going to be directly attaching it. Because this doesn't support, like, plugging it into a network and pulling it off of it. That may be in the licensed version of it, which, again, most home users are not going to do that. Now, if you have a NAS and have it set up, I mean, I haven't looked into that feature at all. Because, uh, like I said, basically, I'm just doing this, and I'm typically using it to an external. Reason being is because externals, I don't use a lot. It's more internal drive storage, and when my um, SANs were working, my storage area net network devices were, were working, I have to get drives, and that's a whole other kettle of fish right at this point in time. But basically, if you have that and you want to do that, probably the paid version would work and do that. It'll probably take longer, especially if your network's not that fast where I like when it's USB or drive-to-drive -drive because it's definitely a lot quicker. 
Okay, and the read media is, or the restore media is now created. So then, if I want to boot off of it, because this laptop does not have a have a CD drive in it. I mean, I could put one in. You know, I can plug an external into it. There's plenty of USB ports, and it would work, and it would. But eh, you know what I mean. Plus, not only that, like I said, if my wife images hers, I can just use one restored disc for the two, two different machines. Well, maybe not, considering it's using drive. I would have to experiment with that. And I may do that. I may do that. Um, but that's how you create restore media. You got these three choices, um, depending upon how you want to do it. Not sure what this does, because it's probably if you have... A, I want to say it's probably if you have a USB thumb drive plugged into it, you could probably create that. This, I'm not sure why that's there. Because I'd have to look into it. I haven't, like, read the manual or anything like that because I just updated to 8. But, in essence, this is, this is really good software for being free. And, you know, you can image all three of these discs, although, you know, to me, I'd just back up the data off of this, this two terabyte spinning drive to either an external or if my storage units were working, I would have it over there. Um, this is definitely the boot drive. This is where my work drive for creating videos and stuff like that is. So. Yeah, I'd lose data, and I typically back that stuff up to the external right now until I can get those working again. But if you're looking for just imaging your laptop, especially if you have kids, uh, this is perfect because not only will it image the entire drive and take a snapshot of that drive, if your kids download a program that's malware, that's a virus, you can... Unless it's, unless it's like a month. Like if you have kids that just do that kind of stuff, I would definitely like clean the machine up and take a snapshot every like week just so that it doesn't get so bloated. And like I said, once they put a lot of those free games that have all kinds of goofy shit attached to them, this way, then, you can roll it back to that. It's kind of like Windows um, in the server business world where it takes a snapshot once every so many hours. Like, I know at my workplace, um, our network drives take a snapshot at, like, 7 in the morning, noon. I want to say 5 also, but I know a lot of times it's usually been, like, 7 and 12 because I've had to restore stuff that people have deleted by accident. And whenever we did have this... Uh, crypto locker thing we just you know rolled it back i mean we might have been missing a little bit of data but not too terrible and you know we got rid of it that way but that's that's the key right there at least this way if you're taking snapshots like that if you have this set like scheduled backups if you have it scheduled to back up once a week you know because you always have an external drive attached to the machine let it do that then that way if the kids decide to do something, you're 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 always going to lose work when something like that happens. Whether it's a hard drive crash, whether it's a uh, virus attack of some type, or a crypto locker or something like that, you are going to lose some data. But it's not like oh crap, I've lost six months worth of stuff. Whether it's you edit photos. Um, whether you edit photos, uh, music, videos, any of that kind of stuff. Definitely look at some kind of backup service. I know I talked about it in another video. Um, it was probably when I first started my channel, but I don't think I showed this software or anything like that. I talked about it, figuring out a backup strategy. But this is nice because, like I said, it will snapshot the entire disk so that you know your, your OS is intact. Uh, everything that you've stripped off of it when you bought a new computer and all the stuff you've loaded onto it is restored. And you also tell your kids not to touch it. <laughs> That's why I always recommend give them an old computer and you keep the new one.
<laughs> that way, if they wreck that one, that one's fine. Because um, if I had kids, that's exactly what I'd do. They would not be playing on this or anything that I deem important. Here, here's an old machine. That's that. But that's a whole other topic for discussion someday. And if you want to talk about it, uh, post it in the comments. And if so, I can always set up a live stream sometime soon. But the software is free. I'll post a link to it in the description below. Uh, they do have a Black Friday offer, so that if you want to pay for it, um, let me click on this. It'll probably open a browser. Yeah, it did. So let me switch back. Uh, but right now, a single license is thirty-five dollars. It's sixty-nine ninety-five. The four-pack, if you have four machines that you want to, you know, have, and like I said. Like, you know, it has file and folder backup, rapid delta cloning, increases cloning speed by copying file system deltas. And there's so much stuff here. It says, uh, it says restore images to dissimilar hardware using Macrom redeploy not included in the 30-day trial, which obviously I understand that. Uh, removable flash media and export. That's probably like the 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 version 8. Now, like I said, what the free... I'm trying to see if there's a compare. Yeah, removable media imaging and cloning creates images of running Windows OS, restored non-booting systems, scalable and navigable log view interface, uh, boot backups in a Hyper-V virtual machine, if you want to do that, uh, direct disk cloning, WinPE 11 rescue media, and then that's the trial, and then the complete package, everything the 30-day trial has, has something to do with Oracle VirtualBox. Uh, Bare metal restored to dissimilar hardware with redeploy, one year technical, lifetime license, no subscription or renewals. That's a nice thing. I hate these stupid monthly, we need to charge you monthly. All I have to say on that. That's why I don't believe in that. There's a uh, free minor version upgrade. So, I mean, it, it depends on the features and, you know, It's it's up to you. Like I said, for me, for what I'm doing, for snapshotting my my OS drive, even though yes, it's tied to my Windows domain, it's perfect for it, and it really is. The only problem I see that I might have if I take a snapshot and it's out of sync with AD when I restore it, it'll probably do blah blah blah. You know, it can't. I think the only way I think to fix it, I'd have to take it off the domain, rejoin it to the domain, and then. It should work fine going forward. I don't know. I haven't run into that because my computer usually gets tweaked and everything on the domain, so it's it's happy. And I and I know my my machine was off the domain for at least four months and it was still good because I did the floor and uh, I have videos of the total nightmare mess it was to fix this room. So. I mean, it's up to you. You know, it's definitely easier than Clonezilla. I haven't used Clonezilla. It's all command line, as you saw from me running this. I mean, it's all graphical. And I would say, you know, this, this to me is, is easier for most home users. I'm not saying I couldn't use Clonezilla. I may look into it. Um, it's tempting to see if I can clone a VirtualBox VM from my machine to my Proxmox, and I need to see if there's a way for me to do that. Because if I can use Clonezilla, I have no problems with that. That way, if I set up something here that I want to run there, I'll just transfer it over. 
not a problem because I think it has over the network capability. I have to look into that, but that's again, that's a topic for a whole other video. But for free software, this is this is really nice. I have been using this since I found it, and I think I found it when sometime after I started working where I'm at now, and I've been there for 11 years. Um, I've been using it since then, and I think I used it either version 5 or 6, and it's now up to 8. And like I said, I, I, I do mine typically once a month. Um, if you have kids that do all kinds of crazy stuff, I would recommend once a week, if not twice a week. Um, especially if you guys only use the computer like once or twice a week. That way, you snapshotted it right after you completed whatever stuff you did. Uh, if it's anything local, like when you do your online banking, you don't have to worry about that because that stays on the cloud. Um, but like I said, but you know, if, if they do crazy stuff, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend doing it at least once a week if you have, like I said, little kids that love clicking on the free games and, and all that good stuff. So that is pretty much it for this video. Um, if you, I mean, I leave my links to my social media also down in the video description. Uh, if you like what I've been doing so far, please like and subscribe. Um, you know, share it with people who you think might benefit from anything that I've promoted. If there's anything you want me to see or, you know, look into, if you're curious about it, uh, again, Post the comments in the in the description. So that's all pretty much what I have to say today. Uh, again, you know, if you like what I do, please like, subscribe, share. And as I always like to say, have a good day, guys, and take care.